My name is Silva Mandarin, and uh, I'm the VP of Product Management and uh, Strategy for a startup called AppSito. So um, just wanted to quickly give a brief uh, background about our company and then kind of get started with talking about this integration. So the company was actually formed about two years back. Uh, the CTO of the com company is, uh, I mean, the founder of the company is the CTO, ex CTO of uh, Citrix Netscaler, which uh, you may or may not have actually heard about it. I myself, I ran the uh, application delivery and cloud product line for F5, which is the another ADC vendor. So uh, we kind of, and, and our VP of engineering was actually uh, in uh, mm -hmm. near Terrace and Juniper, NetScreen, et cetera, security background. So we all got together and actually uh, started working on the, uh, redefining the services for how we uh, are going to be thinking about L4 to 7 services as, you know, really the space is kind of evolving and uh, what do we need to do, et cetera. So here, I'm specifically going to talk to you guys about what kind of integration have we done from the perspective of AppSito and Pluribus, okay? And we, we have a, a website, you know, we're launching our product next week. We've got a website which is, you know, um, which, is, which is there, and there's going to be a new website tonight, and it's going to be looking a lot better. So if you see a, a not so good website, just know that there's a new website which is actually coming. All right. So the idea here is that, um, you know, that you start, you started to talk about the fabric from a network perspective, which allows you to really be able to provide, uh, uh, help you with the connectivity problem from an L2 and L3 perspective. So the next logical question you need to ask is that, how do you actually overlay the services on top of that? Uh, and that's kind of where the, um, we come in. Uh, so Pluribus switches are providing this high performance capability, a platform which allows you to really be able to do network L2 through L4 services. Um, and AppSito actually comes in and provides the L4 through 7 services, which is running as a, as a VM, leveraging actually the underlying Pluribus hardware, right? And, and really, you know, brings that services fabric on top of that. That's kind of like the joint vision for us to really address the challenges and problems which are traditionally not addressed. So I want to take a, a quick moment to kind of actually talk about what those problems are. Um, let me just quickly hit, uh, hit on these problems. So if you look at the traditional uh, services model, the traditional data center model, basically you have a three-tier architecture with a core tier and an act tier and an access tier. Typically, if you think about ADCs, um, they could be deployed in a couple of deployment models. One is that you could actually have an application delivery controller connected to a VLAN uh, in an ag layer and then basically a banks of actually application delivery controllers which are front-ending your DMZ servers are actually the clusters of servers actually at the back end. Uh, you could also have a firewall sandwich uh, um, a mode where you could have a firewall service module followed by an ADC, an application delivery controller, and you can kind of actually scale that. Some people have started to actually put the ADC in front of the firewall because sometimes you know, you're really getting a lot of traffic inside there, and some of the ADCs actually have the better ability to really deal with a lot more TCP connections actually coming inside there to really protect DDoS type of environments. But regardless of actually what this is, the, the key point actually to understand is that um, the change management inside the application delivery controller is actually a big challenge and a problem, right? So what that means is that traditionally what started as a load balancing device now started to actually aggregate more and more capabilities in terms of the different types of services. So now you're not only putting load balancing, you're putting web application firewalling, some people have put an L3 firewall in there, some people put optimization capabilities and so on and so forth. So now it's highly consolidated. When you really want to be, be making any changes inside the context of this device, it's just next to impossible really to be able to get things going. So as a result, what's happened actually is that there's only 50 to 20% of the coverage, even depending on actually the size of the enterprise, only five to 10% of the applications even actually are, you know, you have to be really a premium application for you to be getting on actually the web inside the context of ADC. Now we are having a slightly different approach because like apps from an AppSeta perspective, when we think about it, we say, look, every app inside the data center needs to be highly available, 
Every app needs to be secure, maybe protected from application level type of attacks. Every app needs to be performing properly. So, um, so that means that we need to really think about how we can you know, get those ideas of services in a much more consumable uh, manner across for different types of application. The second aspect is that the uh, configuration uh, aspect of really you know, locking down, any, anybody try to make whip changes, it, it takes about a, uh, roughly about a month actually to go through the ticketing process to get you know, any sort of changes actually inside, uh, inside the context of it. And only trained people can really do that. If you do all this, basically, if you have a number of, if you have different types of services, some people, you know, start to put some compute nodes and actually spin up actually virtual uh, virtual machines. You know, so I've started to address this, but the problem is that you can't really elastically, you know, share the state across these different instances. This is actually, you know, like even the hardware vendors have actually solved this problem of sharing the state by in many protocols, but they really like, for example, if you look at Citrix, they have TriScale, the scale on, and there's a bunch of actually protocols out there which, which actually does it, but it's kind of, it's not really taken off. Let's just say the clustering capabilities of it. So I think for largely, it's used by, it's definitely used by many customers, but it's not like, you know, widely used by, in a, in a bigger way. And then the fourth one is that because you have a services layer in, you know, really at the ag side, now you not necessarily are basically routing the traffic in the most optimal sense in terms of services. So that becomes a bit of a challenge. And then the, uh, not to mention that, um, you know, uh, the troubleshooting and other things actually are really uh, a challenge. So that's kind of where uh, we come in. So essentially we are a software-based uh, a, a services model with then decoupled a control plane and a data plane with a distributed control plane and a management and and then big data analytics uh, plane on the top, right? That's that's uh, running in there. And then there's lots of small instances of proxy. So instead of actually buying one big box, which is really you know um, aggregating all the WIPs and serving all of that, what we what we instead have is lots of smaller instances which are running in front of each of the applications. Um, and uh, you know, in this case, actually running on, on the top of the switch itself as actually a, a service, providing you load balancing, providing you web application firewalling, et cetera. Very easy actually to provision this inside the context of the, and, and each of these uh, load balancing or cluster. But you talked about you know, how many do you spend, right? Well, initially we spend actually a cluster of two and it can auto scale depending on actually the needs of how many, you, how many applications you actually have inside the context of Rack. The other aspect of this is that, you know, the events, this is not really happening inside the data center, actually uh, many data centers yet, but it is going to happen. It's definitely happening inside the context of cloud, which is the idea of that an application, when you think about application, let's think about a white sheet of paper. White sheet of paper, okay. So that white sheet of paper was what was called an application and the delivery of the application was really about taking that white sheet of paper and actually delivering it to different type of devices, overing a TCP connection, HTTP, et cetera. But now that white sheet of paper is actually based or constructed based on a service oriented architecture with actually the services really distributed across the uh, different uh, VMs. And that's kind of what is causing this idea of east-west type of traffic which goes in there. So how do you really, so, in, so, so what we are saying is that instead of just thinking about how to deliver the application, you should also be thinking about how do you actually make those services really highly available and secure because a lot of these are actually using the same type of protocols on how do you actually stitch them all together as an application and then deliver that aspect actually to this. So that's kind of what we do with our, uh, with our solution from an AppSeed or data plane perspective. And therefore, you know, it's not only um, aware of the north-south traffic, it's also actually aware of the application and the services which are distributed across the racks. So it's actually aware of the east-west traffic and you can apply, you know, using the VFlow uh, methodology, you can actually select the interesting traffic you want to be able to actually apply the services for and then really apply the uh, traffic. The other aspect is that um, from an economics perspective, we just made this really, really uh, very, very easy for you to really be able to wholesale industrialize ADC, uh, the concept of ADC across all different type of applications. So uh, that's something which we are offering these capabilities as a, as a SaaS model. 
um, in the sense that every, every app, you can actually grow your app and you can start small and you can kind of grow, et cetera. Um, so it's uh, everything which we do inside the context of an application, I'm going to show you some interface which will get you some idea. Everything is kind of organized by application, right? Um, so that means that you have application, health metrics for the application, security metrics, performance metrics, and then you have full, today we have L7 through L4 information. And the integration which we are working on is to really be able to capture through the fabric full information associated with a single application from L1 through L7 all in a single place. Health, security, performance, right? So that makes, we think, that gives you the ability to uh, really be able to, you know, quickly get into, get into troubleshooting and dashboarding and, and all of that, okay? Does that give you guys an idea? So, so the, if you didn't understand anything, you just say services overlaid on top of actually the fabric to really be able to provide the, the services, network services like in load balancing, application security, web performance optimization, et cetera. It's about industrialization of that services concept because we believe services is actually not applicable to few applications, but to every application. So what I think I'm hearing sounds sort of like the prior model that I was aware of was Palo Alto partnered with VMware to put virtualized Palo Alto firewalls in with NSX and then uh, provide the panorama overlay to yeah, yeah. manage them. And what I've always worried about that is what I call death by small boxes. You have a lot of boxes and you have something that if it's just strapped on, you're man still managing a lot of boxes and there's a lot of fiddle work to get it to work. So are you sort of approaching that as more of a, from a different perspective, reinventing it? So instead of taking existing your um, yeah, be one system distributed rather than lots of little boxes that are centrally controlled. Yeah, so there is no box first of all. Everything is actually software, and uh, in the sense that, and and um, you know we have a, a very small, tiny little proxies which are actually inside the context of the VMs. Uh, in the you know you can think about actually uh, inside the context of data center, you typically have a network management uh, kind of a, 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 a subnet where you actually maintain all the servers, et cetera. And that's kind of where our, you know, this, this idea of actually collecting all the big data analytics, the controller and everything's kind of running there. It's also elastic, it's also highly available, distributed, et cetera. Uh, we can also collect that actually the same data, data inside the context of cloud. Okay, so, uh, so the, uh, we're thinking about it actually differently. Um, yeah. Sorry, quick, quick question. So, uh, just random question. So, yeah. <clears throat> in this distributed architecture, do you have the concept, uh, do you have the ability to burst and spin up uh, a yeah, services yeah. workload into general compute, not just on the pluribus? Yes, I yes. Uh, well, uh, the orchestration tool, one ecosystem? Yeah, so, so, the, uh, the, uh, so the short answer is yes. Uh, inside the context of pluribus, we can actually vertically scale the different instances when, when your app, apps actually increase. And we also have this idea of actually separating the state from the actual instances itself. So that means you can scale from SSL from one connection to 100 connection to 10,000 connections vertically, just like how you're doing inside the context of cloud, right? And we can also, you know, launch an instance actually of an, uh, 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 of an uh, the load balancer actually inside the context of a compute as well. Uh, are you going into how you scale out load balancer and SSL termination? Because firewalls are easy. Load balancer is a really hard problem. Um, so the, um, the, yeah, I mean, that is a separate discussion itself. Yeah. We can definitely talk about that offline, maybe in the, because I've been like given five minutes. Okay, yeah. sorry. We're going to uh, bar up north. Okay, up north? Yeah. Up north, okay. Um, no, we'll take it offline. Yeah, I will, sh I, will sh I will send you all the details. Thank you. All right, uh, so we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, is the short answer, and I'll explain it to you how. All right, so uh, I do want to show our interface real quick here. I don't know whether you are. Uh... I like the carbon Asus. Oh, you don't. You're not seeing anything. Okay. Hold, hold you true. Hold true. <laughs> you going? No, I think I think I might defect. That's a really good looking <laughs> netbook. <laughs> Yeah, but you do realize that still runs Windows, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can put Linux on Linux. it. Linux. The precipice and he goes and jumps. Right. <laughs> you know, this, this may not be the right time to actually bring up this. Uh, I've had some issues with Mac, but uh, 
I like my. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, saying sorry, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I said that. In front of you, yeah. Okay, you got it. Um, all right. Back to this. This is our. Um, this is our portal. Uh, basically, um, come on now. Um, okay. So this is our portal, and essentially you sign into our portal, and the onboarding of actually what we need to do in terms of adding an application uh, just starts with by providing you an application. Uh, inside the cloud environment, we have the ca capability to actually automatically discover your entire topology of your application servers and insert ourselves actually as a proxy in front of it, and then allow make a DNS change for us to allow actually to uh, a routing change so that we can continue to actually serve as a proxy. Um, and uh, we, we're not going to show that onboarding demo right now, but instead I'm going to show you an example of actually already a running service, a load balancing service which is actually running on top of actually the, the, the switch uh, and serving actually these servers um, and uh, basically we have this concept of, uh, and you can configure actually uh, different types of uh, things like smart flows, et cetera. So uh, what we call smart flow means that, you know, in, in, for a particular domain on a particular app, let's say www.pluribus.com, right? If that's a uh, domain which you're actually running inside, you could have a number of flows, a number of properties which you are actually hosting inside the context of the domain. Any number of flows can actually be coming inside. So we have a very granular way of actually just selecting uh, the policy on what, what you can you know, do with, with that environment. For example, you, know, you could just name whatever that smart flow is going to be, and it could be anything inside URL, anything inside header, et cetera anything inside port or by country. So, and then you could just apply the policies in terms of you know, load balancing policies automatically selected. You could do compression. You could do uh, web application firewalling. Um, so in this case, I'm going to say, uh, we can actually do web application firewalling capability, which allows you to basically uh, turn on um, in an active mode uh, a WAF capability. You could also actually do things like uh, blacklisting and whitelisting of uh, of the uh, the different types of actually services inside there. You could do caching. You could do. Uh, how many of you guys actually have heard about Google's uh, PageSpeed module? Okay. Okay. So this is a module which uh, they have you know uh, open open sourced etc. But essentially what it does is it uh, gives you a set of uh, 15 to 20 best practices. Um, it, uh, it looks at the multiple uh, size sheets, it's kinda, it orders them all together, brings them all actually, or you know, compresses the images which you need to compress, looks at the HTTP header, looks at the different types of devices it's actually connecting from, what types of networks are they connecting from, and optimize actually the delivery so that you can deliver that web page actually to that end device in a less than 100 millisecond. So we, we have included that, that capability as a part of this, and we're also supporting, supporting HTTP 2.0, et cetera. So uh, let me just stop here. Load balancing plus web application firewalling plus application performance optimization working on top of the pluribus switches, it actually be working across every single one of the switch, each of this area, to provide the services layer on top of the uh, network fabric really is kind of like the joint vision which we are working towards uh, from both companies. With that, if there's any questions, I, I'm happy to answer. If not, uh, I want to get back, Sunay, into the conversation.